Hello, everyone. Welcome to Extreme Passion. And Roger, welcome to. Hi, sis. How are you? I'm good. This show would not be going on right now uh, for as long as we've done it if you weren't here. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 same, that's same for you, too. <laughs> that's true. Do you think you could call this uh, offensive warfare? Offensive warfare. Well, that's a good question. Uh, what comes to your mind when you think about offensive warfare? Well, I'm thinking the enemy doesn't like what we're doing. And by us sharing with people the truths of spiritual warfare, that that in Lord willing is enlightening some of the minds of the people who are watching this and they are beginning to become more active in their prayer life. And then the enemy doesn't like that. And that's warfare. Boy, is it not? That's, yes, it is. Absolutely. Every uh, every step that we take. every <laughs> <laughs> There's a song that says every, that. You yes, know? there is. That remember was that what song? Kept, that's what came to my mind, every step <laughs> I take. Uh, yeah. How about every prayer I make? You know, that's a better one. Yeah, absolutely. Although um, there is a scripture, where is that in Malachi, that says that we will put our feet on the enemy's head. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So well, you know, one of the step. one of the things that we're going to do talking about that, uh, we're going to be going through some of our some of the gifts and weapons that God has given us to stomp on the head of satan <laughs> you know i was one trying of things to we're that gonna, with. <laughs> yeah one of the things we're going to do is you're going to be sharing with us about the power of dance very much dancing so. dancing on injustice yeah it's going to be so one important. of the top topics that we're going to be covering and yeah, worship and warfare yeah you so know. much of this is not taught majorly in the church yeah. some churches ignore it all totally i mean you open up the hymn book and you oh heaven forbid them. that you would dance in church my gosh you know. oh wow <laughs> and they don't realize or use flags or use instruments or, right i mean you know the church historically went through a period where they banned all instruments piano organ they didn't even use string instruments, let alone horns, okay? Uh, every bit of it was banned for, I think, maybe a century or two. I forgot how exactly how long, but it was a long time. And I can't remember right now without going back and doing some restudy or find it in my notes somewhere, uh, when it was, who brought it back in. But to say that it is totally in, it's not. It's not. And that's because the teaching is not there. People don't know. And right. so your scripture says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. <laughs> if you don't know how to do spiritual warfare, then guess what? We could be destroyed. Boy, that isn't that the truth. You know, they, unfortunately, there's so many churches that look at... Um, you know, when you talk about music and instruments and things like that in the church, they they think about worldly things. You know, they right. think about worldly use of instruments and things. But you know, God has God invented music, and we you know we talked about that before, and, and uh, uh, the role that Lucifer had in heaven. You yeah. know, so uh, well, yeah, music. so it's that definitely is something that that. <laughs> has been and has been being if i can say it like yes. that redeemed you know Praise God. uh but, back to back to the church yeah because, well, you know, uh, I, you know, i'm interrupting you roger but i'm thinking about what you're saying you know the westland brothers the hymns came were bar tunes originally now that yeah. we call worldly and all they did was change the words and then, you know, I'm thinking about right. 
That's right. David. They used old beer beer hall music. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That yeah, was the music, the music of the day. And so <laughs> a lot of the church now reacts to like the music of kind of the rock music. Oh, that's worldly. I don't want anything to do with it. Those heavy, heavy drums. Don't want anything to do with that. Uh, but, you know, if you think about David, you know, here he is. He danced all the way. Yeah. It was miles, okay, that he <laughs> danced. And he kind of got kind of a little bit wild in his dancing. He got a little carried away. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. He got, <laughs> you know, he got hot. And I think he, you know, he shed some clothes there, you yeah. know, because <laughs> right, of right. the dancing. The yeah. Way, is yeah, it? he Maybe that's gone a little too far, but. <laughs> but I'm just saying. You we're know, not advocating that, people. No, just want you to know no, about it. No, no, we're not. Don't, we're don't not. take your clothes off at church, please. No, please don't. <laughs> please don't. That won't go over today. But what I am saying, though, is that what we classify, even in churches that do spiritual warfare, what we classify as being legitimate being okay mm -hmm. this is our boundary we don't go here we don't go there a lot of it is religion yes Abs yes it is yes it yeah, is. Absolutely. has nothing to do with god right and of course right. we're going to be we're also going to be talking about the giftings and callings that god has given us the nine gifts of the spirit exactly know, and those types of things so they're essential yeah it is so um I'm going to go ahead and launch and kind of get started into this. Yeah, if that's I okay think with that you. would be good. All right. Let me see if I can do this and see if I remember how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you seeing? Superman, his powerful yeah. eyes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, right. And that's Wonder Woman there. Yes. And uh and I, I chose this particular slide oh, that's good. picture um, as offensive weapons because you, if you remember Superman, what did he stand for? Righteousness. Truth, Goodness. justice, yeah. and, and the American way. <laughs> yes, I can't forget the American way. Can't say that now, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. That's true. And then Wonder Woman, what was that? You see her lasso, her, her rope, her lasso. What do you remember what that did? No, I don't remember. I didn't watch her as much as I watched Superman. <laughs> if she put her lasso around you, it was impossible for you to lie. You oh, had really? to tell the truth. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Oh, now I've got to go watch Wonder Woman, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You know, there, she, uh, she had a movie out not too long ago. We went to the movie theater. Yeah. It was very good. Was it? So well, it's probably on Disney now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, know, I just it, go ahead. It, it, you know, it, when you watch, I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to people who are watching us and listening. When you watch movies and things like Wonder Woman, Superman, don't just watch it for entertainment. Yes, watch it for entertainment, but also. Look and see if you could see behind what's being filmed, the spiritual truths that mm -hmm. they are trying to get across. Now, a lot of them are trying to get across spiritual truths. They're thinking but in the terms of darkness, but they don't have the light of light. It's, this is just a, what do I want to say? A, what's the word I'm looking for, Roger? A, 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 a simile of what God has given to us, yes. you know, so much more. But there's truths that we can glean from things like Superman and Wonder Woman. <laughs> right. Well, like you say, exactly right. Outside of the dark films, and there's some dark ones that are out there. Right. For the most part, most of your superheroes are the people that stand for righteousness. It's the, it's the, uh, good versus evil. Right. Good overcomes you know, evil. Right. And and good we know that good overcomes evil. So mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. So and then we always we always cheer 
you know, when yeah. the bad guy gets his due. <laughs> Yay, we cheer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip back one right to the very end. This was what this was our review. Okay. And did section three. And um uh, and I want to start actually with the last verse that's there. I mean, they we talked about the church and what is the church, the role of the church, and wow, that doesn't fit on the screen, does it? No, it um, doesn't. <laughs> so I'll have to move it around. So we, you know, one of the, the one of the remarkable things that we talked about came out of Ephesians three, and we're gonna. That's what we're gonna actually talk about today. Is we're gonna go more in depth into Ephesians three. But we ended the last session with God's trophy wife being the church. And we called her the trophy wife because God said, um, <laughs> well, uh, here, he intends now. You know what? This doesn't fit. I'm just going to read it this back. Out. I'll read it. Yeah. He says, I'm privileged to enlighten all of Adam's descendants to the mystery concealed from the previous ages by God that the creator of all through the church, that's you and I, the bride of Christ, through the church, he intends now to make known his infinite and boundless wisdom to all rulers and authorities in heavenly realms. And this has plan been his plan from the beginning, the one that is, he has now accomplished through the anointed one, Jesus our Lord. So through the church, what he's saying here is through the church, he is going to demonstrate Every, his his plan from the time of beginning, and and he's going to show us off. So in order to show us off to the heavenly realms and powers and authority, he has to give us certain powers and gift of our own, our own supernatural powers, if you will, you know. And and because that's exactly what they are, they we will have superpowers, and so. We're going to get into the, the first slide. I'm not sure how far we're going to get into it, but. Um, Very far, but a little bit. Yeah. And it's it. what I tried to do because Ephesians 3, the chapter, chapter 3 of Ephesians, really puts this whole theme of what we just looked at in that verse, kind of puts it all together. And, and I couldn't fit the whole chapter in here, you know, so I had to like pull, you know, just some uh, essential verses out of that chapter, but it gives you a real picture of what God is, has intended from the very beginning. And then I looked at the, I know this fits on the screen because I did it. I checked I, it before we started. <laughs> well, I, I think it's a great homework assignment. Everybody just go read chapter three of Ephesians. Go read chapter three of Ephesians. So we're going to make some, we're going to start out, we're going to read through this, make some comments. I know you're going to have some things to say, sis, so we'll see how, we'll see how far we get, okay? All right, so Ephesians 3, verse 3, and then note that whatever I put dots in front of it, it means I'm not quoting the whole thing, okay? You know, there's, there's other words in front of this, but it says, for this wonderful mystery, and, and I've noticed or I want you to notice that as we go through this, there's a kind of a theme, and I've highlighted it in yellow. So when you see uh, the words that are highlighted in yellow, you'll realize that that's kind of the theme that runs through this thing, Ephesians 3. For this wonderful mystery, and then I put in there, it's talking about the church. All right, The church is a mystery, and we just read that scripture there a minute ago. I briefly described was given to me. This is Paul speaking, by the way. He says, I briefly described was given to me by divine revelation. Now, here's the secret. The gospel of grace has made you members of his body, one with the anointed one. Verse 7 and 8, and I have been made a messenger of this wonderful news by the gift of grace this grace gift was imparted when the manifestation of his power came upon me. So grace alone empowered me so that I can boldly preach this wonderful message. So notice he's saying that 
he received this, and he's calling it a gift. And he it is he a gift. it is a gift, and he actually was gifted. He was he became the chief apostle, and and he was gifted and anointed for this purpose. And it it was interesting to me that he's saying that the purpose for his gift was this the sharing of this mystery what he calls his mystery that's been from the beginning of time, this revelation that has been given to him that he has now been anointed to boldly preach. You know, so, I, I think, Roger, but, you know, bef just for clarification purposes, that before Jesus came, there was no such word as church. The saints in the Old Testament never used the word church. So... No. When Paul comes along, and actually Jesus did, and he says, upon this rock will I build my church, even they didn't understand what he was saying. They really didn't. So it is a divine revelation. It is a secret. And we take it for granted because we're now, what, 2,000 years later, all, you know, approximately, yeah. And right. so we just take it for granted. This is the way it is. And people don't tend to get the depth of that revelation. This is a mystery. It's If it's a mystery, it's something to be explored, to find out all the secrets, the benefits. Why does Paul call it a mystery? And that word is still used today that means there's something god really wants us to see yeah and notice that paul says that it was it was revealed to him yeah that the mystery was revealed to him but notice his words it was They're revealed powerful. it was imparted when the manifestation of his power came upon me so he's talking about something supernatural that happened, he had this power that came upon him, a supernatural manifestation of God's power that came upon him. And in the midst of that, he got this divine revelation of what God's plan was from the very beginning and how it ultimately culminates in the church. Can you imagine, Roger, how excited Paul was when oh. he got this, I mean, no wonder he couldn't keep his mouth shut. Everywhere you look in the word, he's talking about some aspect of what's been given to us. I mean, with such a manifestation, you know, you, you think about this. I mean, if you look back at the revivals, you know, God has come upon man in some kind of supernatural power that all of a sudden you've got a healing revival. You've got uh, mm -hmm. the, the revelation of the Father's heart revival. Uh, you know, and it's this impartation that comes. But with Paul, it is actually the biggest revelation of all. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was. And when you think about Paul, I mean, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was of yeah. the. He was of the Jewish sect, and. Now here he's actually, and he's not speaking to Jews here. He's speaking to Gentiles, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And and he, in other places he talks about how the Gentiles are grafted in, you yeah. know, into the oh. vine, and that God had this big, this whole, we'll call it big tent because they like to use that word in politics, right? God had this big tent, you know, vision from the mm -hmm. very beginning, and it wasn't it wasn't just for one particular nationality or one particular no. culture you know right but it included all of mankind so well going on here and you and you talked about how excited it got and that's what it first says in verse nine he says my passion is to enlighten every person to this divine mystery you know so it's like yeah he's excited about it he can't shut up about it mm -mm. you know and mm -mm. he's He's going to boldly preach this no matter can, what. Can you and, imagine when he got this revelation that Jesus is really God and he's yeah. Lord? 
and he's laying there and he's blind for three days. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, these things are beginning to hit him. And then when God sent, takes him away and, and for to teach him so many different things, I believe a lot of what we're reading right now comes from those years of isolation. Uh, you know, that spirit that comes through in his words, that excitement, those words that he picks out like mystery, grace gift impartation to try to get us to see this is not the norm. It's not like walking into the mall and saying, oh, I want to buy this or I want to buy that. It's so much greater than that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's blown away. Right. Right. So he, Paul goes on. He's, he said, that's my passion is to enlighten every person to the divine mystery. And the purpose of this was to unveil before every throne, and this is the this is what we just read a minute ago. And like this is a different version. This is the Passion version here, and we read it a minute ago. We read it in the the Voice translation, and but this is the same verse, verse ten. The purpose of this was to unveil before every throne and rank of angelic orders in the heavenly realm God's full and diverse wisdom revealed through the church so you, you know we saw that in the voice translation that it, it it said in to the heavenly realms to the principalities and powers in the heavenly realms yeah. and this talks about the church the wisdom that god had from the beginning was to be he was going to use the church to reveal that to all of the the Every throne and rank of angelic orders in the heavenly realm. I mean, oh my gosh, that's like, um, wow, yeah, it's like, I what, mean, what's going on here? We're talking <laughs> yes. about you and me, we're talking about the church. What, what's really going on here? So, yes. who are um, we that God should bestow that on us? Yeah, that our purpose is to reveal, yeah, yeah. exactly. So he goes on and he says, I kneel humbly in awe. Because, no wonder. No wonder before the Father of our Lord Jesus. And I pray that he would unveil within you, you and I, me, and everybody who's a believer, unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. So that that's what he's that's what he's called us to. That we would have we would have superpowers. Exactly. Basically it, it basically what he's saying, you know, that he's gonna give us superpower, supernatural strength, floods our innermost beings with divine might and explosive power. Now I'm gonna right. end it right there because yeah, there's I was more say, to go, but yeah, yeah, I know that. But Roger, think about that flood, a, a flood. It, it's a growing body of water. You know, that water first hits, we think about uh, South, you know, Western North Carolina and the floods came in and it grows. That very verse implies that the more we get flooded with that revelation, it's going to continue growing. There's going to be an increase in excitement in your walk, people, of the knowledge of Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. And it's going to so explode in you. And yes. we live in this day and age where God is really planning to pour mm -hmm. out this revival on you. And when it comes on you, you're not going to be able to keep your mouth shut any more than Paul could. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. You really right. couldn't. Right. You, we are not merely a sinner saved by grace. No. God, God has planned such an enormous powerful church that that he's going to show it off to all the principalities and powers in heavenly places that's not just somebody that's just merely mm -hmm. saved by grace but that's somebody who's walking in the power and the anointing that jesus had isn't you know, that exciting that's so, so exciting. i know it's super <laughs> exciting okay now if you haven't had that impartation yet 
Well, Roger, you've done the teaching. I think you should pray for that. Yes, amen. Well, thank you, Lord. We don't have much time. No, we don't. If, if, this, if, if this sounds like something that maybe you've never heard of before, or you've never been taught this, that that God has, in fact, planned supernatural power for you to anoint you. You know that you can, the Bible says you can lay your hands on the sick and they'll recover. Do you know that you can cast demons out of people? God has given us the power and the authority to do that. So that, if if you if that sounds exciting to you and you want that in your life, I just say I invite you right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my, come into my life, come into my heart, Lord. I want you. I want to sample that. I want to know what that's like. I want to have that kind of supernatural power in my life because my life is powerless and I can do nothing. So if you if you believe that and you've said that prayer, then we just invite you into the kingdom of God, into God's kingdom right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, everyone. We will see you next week. Until next week, remember, God is extremely passionate. When we say passionate, we mean passionate about oh, you. Oh, passionate about you. Yes. Indeed. Yes.